was not to disrupt the solemnity of the celebration in the spirit of prayer, we request your cooperation by please attending to your children and turning off your cell phones or putting them on silent mode. We also request the congregation to actively participate in the Mass by please joining in the responses, hymns, and prayers and listening attentively to the readings. Please invite everyone to observe a moment of silence and prepare for the Eucharistic celebration. rise for the Regina Celli. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Queen of Heaven, rejoice. Alleluia. For him whom you were made worthy to bear. Alleluia. Has risen as he said. Alleluia. Pray for us to God. Alleluia. Rejoice and be glad, O Virgin Mary. Alleluia. For the Lord has truly risen. Alleluia. Let us pray. O God, who by the resurrection of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, has deigned to give joy to the whole world, grant we beseech you that through the intercession of the Virgin Mary, his mother, we attain the joys of eternal life through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now never shall be, world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good evening. We welcome you as we celebrate the Holy Eucharist today, the second Sunday of Easter and Divine Mercy Sunday. Like the Apostle Thomas, we want to see clear signs of Jesus' victory over death and corruption. May the Lord open our eyes to the power of his resurrection and transform our doubts and fears into confident faith and boundless joy. This octave day of Easter is also Divine Mercy Sunday. Promoted by St. Faustina Kowalska, whom Pope John Paul II canonized on thir the 30th of April, 2000, the devotion to the Divine Mercy is a perennial invitation for us to face with confidence in divine goodness the difficulties and trials of both the present and the future. 
Our presider is Father Robert Manansala, OFM. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Have mercy on us, O Lord. For we have sinned against you. Show us, O Lord, your mercy. And grant us your salvation. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal feasts kindle the faith of the people you have made your own, 
In Christ we pray the grace you have bestowed that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by His Spirit they have been reborn, by His blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. <coughs> the first community of believers, though poor, is noted for its attitude of sharing. By the power of Jesus' resurrection, the followers of Christ are now of one heart and mind, sensitive to those in need. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The community of believers was of, the, of one heart and mind, and no one claimed that any of his possessions was his own, but they had everything in common. With great power, the apostles were, bore witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great favor was accorded them all. There was no needy person among them, for those who owned property or houses would sell them, bring the proceeds of the sale, and put them at the feet of the apostles, and they were distributed to each according to need. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. Let the house of Israel say, His mercy endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, His mercy endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, His mercy endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good, His love is everlasting. I was hard pressed and was falling, but the Lord helped me. My strength and my courage is the Lord, and He has been my Savior. The joyful shout of victory in the tents of the just. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good, His love is everlasting. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is wonderful in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Give thanks to the Lord for He is good. His love is everlasting. A believer who holds that he or she is loved by God is inspired to love God in return. To keep God's commandments is a joy and not a burden. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is begotten by God. And everyone who loves the Father loves also the one begotten by Him. In this way, we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey His commandments. For the love of God is this, that we keep His commandments, and His commandments are not burdensome. For whoever is begotten by God conquers the world, and the victory that conquers the world is our faith. Who indeed is the victor over the world? but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. This is one who came through water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by water alone, but by water and blood. The Spirit is the one that testifies, and the Spirit is truth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. To honor the gospel, please rise. Together, 
please. You believe in me, Thomas, because you have seen me, says the Lord. Blessed are those who have not seen me, but still believe. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. On the evening of the first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger into the nail marks, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it in into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God, Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book, but these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through you this belief you may have life in his name. My brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters, Father Michael Gately, a member of the Fathers of Mercy and the famous author of the 300 of the 33 Days to Morning Glory, a do-it-yourself retreat in preparation for Marian consecration, shares that when he first read about the promises of grace attached to celebrating the Sunday Mercy Sunday, when he said that they arrived, he prayed all day long for his father who was in need of conversion. He shares that by the mercy of God, his father's conversion happened that very day. My brothers and sisters, in my ministry as a Franciscan priest, I have witnessed the power of the devotion to the divine mercy many, many times for the living, for the dying, and for the dead. The divine mercy devotion can be traced to the appearance of the Lord to St. Maria Faustina Kowalska in 1931 in a vision clothed in a white garment with the right hand raised in blessing. His left hand was touching his garment in the area of the heart from which two large rays came forth, one red and the other pale, which symbolized the blood and water 
that flowed from the wounded heart of Jesus on the cross. We have right now beside the tabernacle that image of the divine mercy. The red rays also symbolize the Eucharist and the pale or white rays baptism and confession. And so God pours upon us his mercies in a very special way to the sacraments of baptism, confession, and the Eucharist. Divine Mercy Sunday or Divine Mercy refers to God's gratuitous and freely given and compassionate love for His people, especially for His people in pain and misery of all types, manifested in concrete saving acts of grace. The saving acts of grace definitely include, but are not limited to the forgiveness of sins. According to our beloved St. John Paul II, Pope of Divine Mercy, mercy is the greatest attribute of God. And the second name of love, or the other word for love. In Jesus Christ, we see the incomparable and tangible personification of the great depths of God's merciful love for us. Jesus is divine mercy personified. The incarnation and passion, death, and resurrection of Jesus have shown the world to what extent God could show his divine mercy. God in Jesus has gone as far as Bethlehem and Calvary to pour out his oil of merciful and compassionate love. Indeed, there is no greater love than this, than to offer one's life for one's friends. In the gospel, the divine mercy is manifested in the way Jesus dealt with his disciples. His first greeting to them, which he repeated thrice, was, Peace be with you. This greeting is very significant. In the light of what his followers had done to him, they had abandoned and betrayed him. But the first time he met them, Jesus said, Peace be with you. No anger, no resentments, no recrimination, but peace and forgiveness. In fact, he was giving them the Holy Spirit and he was extending to them what the Father has sent him, Jesus is still found them worthy of the Holy Spirit and to be sent after all that they had done to him. No blame, no accusation, only forgiveness, peace, and mercy. The mercy of God was not just for the disciples as a group. It was very personal and particular. In his first appearance to them, Thomas was not there. Thus, when the other disciples told him that they had seen the Lord, Thomas did not believe. He needed a personal proof so that he could believe. Jesus, in his love and mercy for Thomas, went back the following week. He came back just for the sake of Thomas and repeated the same greeting, Peace be with you. My brothers and sisters, the private revelation given by the Lord Jesus to St. Faustina Kowalska has been intended to draw the world to the fullness of the public revelation of the Father's unconditional, unconditional and merciful love. While there is nothing new, that the divine mercy devotion is telling us that is not revealed by Jesus, what it does remind us is that this, that this is the greatest attribute of God. Through Saint Faustina, our Lord asked that each day we recite the divine mercy chaplet. We pray the divine mercy prayer at three o'clock in the afternoon, the hour of the death of Jesus, 
we celebrate the second Sunday of Easter as Divine Mercy Sunday and this is what we are doing this weekend. And we proceed this feast with a novena to the Divine Mercy. Have compassion as part of the preparation for this feast and have the image of the Divine Mercy and cultivate interiorly a great trust in the mercy of God and practice exterior acts of mercy, the so-called corporal and spiritual acts of mercy. Focusing on the face of the divine mercy today, or which we anticipate in this Mass, the Lord said, said to St. Faustina, On that day the very depths of my tender mercy are open. I pour out the whole ocean of graces upon those souls who approach the font of mercy. On that day, all the divine floodgates through its graces flow are open. The soul that will go to confession and receive Holy Communion shall obtain complete forgiveness of sins and punishments. St. John Paul II likened this to a second baptism, an extraordinary grace of being cleansed of sin and the punishment due to sin. And that's why we can receive plenary indulgence during this weekend. Not only the forgiveness of our sins, but also the remittance of the consequences of our sins. One of the requirements is to go to confession. If you were not able to do that before today or tomorrow, you have within 20 days to go to confession. To end, I address our engaged couples. For our engaged couples to have a blessed, joyful, and successful marriage, you need to rely more on the mercy of God. You need to cooperate with the mercy of God. You cannot just rely on yourselves and on your personal love for each other. For human love can be conditional. Your marital love must be anchored on the merciful love of God for you as individuals and as a couple. The Lord of divine mercy will teach you how to love more genuinely unconditionally and boundlessly. This is why Jesus says in another gospel passage, Love one another as I have loved you. The merciful and boundless love of God must fill our hearts and must be the foundation for loving others, including one's spouse and children. Please stand. I believe in God, the, the Father, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, His only Son, Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell on the third day, rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us turn to the Father through our Lord Jesus Christ, who plunges us into the infinite ocean of his mercy that is greater than sin, evil, suffering, and death. In His loving mercy, we have victory, salvation, and eternal life. Let our response be, God of mercy, listen to our prayer. God of mercy, listen to our prayer. For the leaders of the church, that believing in and experiencing the Lord's infinite mercy, 
they may always proclaim it to God's people, we pray. God, God of mercy, mercy, listen, listen to our, our prayer. For our local and national leaders, that like the apostles, they may attend to the needs of our communities and work for peace, unity, and progress, we pray. God, God of mercy, mercy listen, listen to our, our prayer. For those who, like Thomas, live in doubt and fear, that peace and forgiveness of the risen Christ may strengthen them to face life's challenges and difficulties, we pray. God, God of mercy, mercy listen, listen to our prayer. For all of us gathered here, that we may be immersed in the ocean of divine mercy and live as ministers of the Lord's peace and reconciliation, we pray. God, God of mercy, mercy, listen to our prayer. For our departed brothers and sisters, may they experience the infinite mercy of God in the heavenly paradise, we pray. God, God of mercy, mercy listen, listen to our prayer. Let us pray for the urgent concerns of our community and our personal intentions. We pray. God, God of mercy, mercy listen, listen to our, our prayer. God, our Father in Jesus, you have shown us your boundless love and infinite mercy. Teach us to love you in return and trust our lives to your love and mercy and serve you in our brothers and sisters through Christ our Lord. Amen. My dear sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be made acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people and those you have brought to new birth, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain an ending happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to love yet more gloriously, 
When Christ our Passover has been sacrificed, through him the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising the life of all has risen. Therefore overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic cause sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. indeed holy O Lord the fount of all holiness make holy therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was sent, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church is spread throughout the world and bring it to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters 
who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us, all we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints, and all the saints, especially Saint Francis and Saint Claire of Assisi, Saint Anthony of Padua and Saint Faustina Kowalska, who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Deliver us, O Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant their peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. 
Blessed are those called to the Supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. For an orderly reception of communion, please wait for the ministers to arrive at their designated places. Allow the front rows to be the first to receive communion, followed by the succeeding pews. The ministers will approach the sick and those in wheelchairs individually. To protect the sanctity of the Holy Eucharist, please consume the sacred host in front of the minister while facing the altar. Thank mm -hmm. you.
let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated and may we now call, please call upon Mr. Sean Cannon of the Family and Life Ministry to present our parishes pre-Cana participant couples. Thank you. Good evening. The Family and Life Ministry of Santuario de San, San Antonio Parish has just completed the pre cana marriage preparation seminar for the month of April. The parish acknowledges with gratitude the work of the ministry servants in this activity, namely Jaime and Karen Blanco, Toto and Disa Abiog, Danny and Tess Rayos del Sol, Chrissy Castillo, Tony and Cynthia Menchaca, Chief and Sel Capilli, Micah Monette jo uh, Gomez, JJ and Annaline Gonzalez, Sean and Apple Cannon, and Father Robert. Father Robert, we are pleased to present the 11 engaged couples who have just completed their pre cana seminar and who are to be married in our parish over the next few weeks and months. Couples, when I call out your names, please come forward and stand at the foot of the sacristy facing the altar. Adrian Alexander Nung Yu and Kimi Chen Hao. Christopher John Ronald Yumang Lobo and Joyce Diane de Jesus Cabanit. Ray Martin Kai Apostol and Eliza May Wee Lit. Christian Angelo Palma Palmares and Jamie Katrina Fangoneu Chan. Marcus Jackson Ong Fua and Rachel Jasmine Wee Ong. Paul John Tubil Domingo and Anna Belinda Cruz Laguesma. Justin Jordan Go de la Cruz and Gracie May Veral Cahucom. Carlo Yabut de Guzman and Elika May Garcia Abalos. Kim Kenneth Nitural Bawa and Beverly Sanchez Espina. Ernesto Gabriel Senador Cipriano Jr. and Maria Amanda Nicole Gustilo Diocampo. Arthur Kaasi Celeste Jr. and Caroline Go Gaweco. Father, thank you. Dear engaged couples, join hands with your respective partners and bow your heads. I request the rest of the congregation to please raise our right hand in a form of blessing to these couples. Lord God, the source of all love, the wise plan of your providence, has brought these couples together as they prepare themselves for the sacrament of marriage and pray for your grace. Grant that strengthened by your blessing, they may grow in their respect for one another and cherish each other with a sincere love. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Thank you, Father. We now ask the couples to turn and face the congregation. Brothers and sisters, let us warm, welcome the couples with a round of applause. Thank you. Couples, please return to your seats and remain for a few moments after the final blessing for picture taking. Thank you. Please rise. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless us, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass has been offered. Let us go in the peace of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Thank you.